When healthcare providers aren't trained to recognize human trafficking, they miss it. In missing it, we're missing an opportunity to disrupt exploitation. It's vital that healthcare professionals receive a human trafficking training. We know from the data that uh, the vast majority of trafficking survivors will present in a healthcare setting during the time they're being trafficked. We also know from the data that most healthcare professionals haven't had a human trafficking training and most of them uh, presume that they've never served a survivor of trafficking. And those data points just don't add up. As an ER nurse, I've never had a patient in my career come in and their chief complaint be, I'm here for human trafficking. So they're going to come in for other ambiguous complaints and we have to be able to read between the lines. It's not adequate just to list things, uh, kind of a checkbox of what you should and shouldn't be looking for. Most of the, any victims I've ever identified, you had to really tease out the situation one may, red flag may tip you off, but it's the conversation and the deep medical history that actually helps you identify those victims. It's also vital for healthcare providers to receive a training because this may be the only time where that victim is away from their perpetrator. It's a really unique opportunity for a, a trained professional to potentially make an identification, at least pass on some resources, or at least just make a, a human connection with that person. Let them know that they care, that they're worried, that they wanna make sure that their needs are met. You have to be able to pick up on those red flags and then identify them, be comfortable having conversations with them about their safety and the realities of human trafficking, and then provide adequate safety and healthcare planning. In a healthcare setting, uh, really everyone should be trained. Doctors and nurses, of course, should be trained, but also front desk professionals, security, janitors, anyone who may inter interact with a survivor, because everyone's gonna be able to notice different red flags. A security officer might notice a conversation that takes place between a trafficker and, and their victim in the parking lot, and be able to pass that information on to the front desk staff, which may then witness uh, the exchange of IDs or cash or another conversation in the waiting room. And then they've got two red flags that they can then pass on to the providers so that when the providers take that individual back uh, to treat them, they've already got a clue that trafficking may be happening and that they can be looking out for red flags. And by the time that interaction ends, we may have collected four or five or six red flags and then a protocol should kick in, right? That's when uh, someone should uh, contact the right person, call the human trafficking hotline, get a social worker involved, or whatever next steps are, are uh, necessary in that setting. It's really an opportunity for the healthcare provider to make that connection. And so when they can't recognize human trafficking, they miss the patient's needs altogether. And in doing so, um, we could have a patient who potentially really needed our help that isn't going to get it and is going to leave the hospital or the clinic and be further traumatized. And may contribute to them uh, no longer seeking medical care um, or not trusting the medical system in general.